In the previous video, we looked at some basic measurement techniques, talking about precision and, uh, and how the percent relative standard deviation can be used for, uh, for assessing the precision of a measurement, and that measuring quantities or larger quantities of materials generally led to uh, better precision. What I want to talk about now is uh, a concept called the calibration curves. And what we're going to do is create a relationship between the number of, uh, in this case, the number of resistors that we've got with the uh, um, uh, you know, with the weight or the mass of the mass of the resistors. So, what we would expect is that the mass of the resistors is going to increase as the number of resistors. Uh, uh, increases. So in this particular case, we're not expecting anything really surprising, but that's the point of, uh, of learning it. So if we start off here and I just measure the mass of, uh, of two resistors, and I get that at 0 0.76, and I'm going to continue to do this up to 10 resistors. Okay, so we've got the uh, uh, number of resistors in uh, column A and the mass in grams in column B. So if we go and create a plot, we're going to choose a, uh, a XY scatter plot not connecting the points. And we see that looks like a fairly straight line. Let's go ahead and add a trend line. And sure enough, it is uh, uh, it is straight. Now, rather than um, get the slope and the intercept from the uh, uh, from uh, from the graph, I'm going to try to do that with uh, with two new Excel functions. So we've got the slope and the intercept. We can get the slope by just typing in equals. Remember, that's the way to indicate that we're going to use a function. And the name of the slope function is slope. The tricky part here is it's asking for the known y values first. So I need to highlight all the y values. Then I highlight the x values, close parentheses. And there's my slope and the intercept. Oops, the intercept is done the same way. First the y's, then the x's. And what are we uh, uh, what are we left with here? Notice how the, uh, the this this line here corresponds to the uh, an increase in mass with the increase in the number of uh, of resistors that we have. So I'm just going to put these in here for clarity. And if you recall, if you were watching the previous video not too long ago, you'll know, notice that the uh, slope here is very, very close to the mass of, a, uh, of an individual resistor. And if we take a look at the, uh, the, the units of the, uh, the slope, the units of the slope are going to be the units on the y-axis divided by the units of, on the x-axis. And we notice that that is in grams per number of resistors or grams per resistor. And the slope in this particular case has a physical significance. It's the mass of a, uh, uh, of a resistor. The intercept also uh, has significance in this particular case. Notice how the number is fairly close to 0 0.01. And we've got nothing on our balance here. We don't have any sort of beaker that we're using to hold our, uh, our resistors. And that number is very close to the uh, uncertainty of the balance. So in this case here, the units are in grams, and this is the uncertainty of the, uh, uh, of, of the balance. And that allows us to do something like this. We can just report that to one significant digit, because that's the best that we can do there. Um, and then this is probably, we probably are going to be able to get three sig figs out of uh, uh, 
out of that one. But we'll wait until a later section in this course to actually talk about the statistics. That's not important right here. Uh, what is uh, useful in this case is, uh, is how we actually use this, uh, uh, this, this equation or this, this graph. The first thing we can do is notice that the uh, the equation that corresponds to this uh, uh, this fit or this model is y equals m times x plus b so that's the equation for a line in our case the y is the uh, mass of sample uh, mass of the resistors and then that equals the mass per resistor that's the slope times the number of resistors and I'm just going to call this offset uh, but that's the uncertainty or so of the uh, uh, of, of the balance um, so if we want to uh, if we have something such as this here I'm going to choose some uh, resistors There we are. And if your camera is really good, or if my camera is really good and your screen's large, you can figure out how many resistors I've got here. But let's see if we can figure it out from the mass itself. This gives us a mass of 2.61. Um, so if we have the mass of the unknown pile as 2.61 grams, how do we figure out the, uh, uh, the number of resistors that are here? Well, if we've got this mass of resistors right here, and we've got the slope and the intercept, then the number of resistors um, should, be, uh, uh, should be obtained by rearranging this equation. And if we rearrange it, then what we get is going to equals, equal sign. We need the mass of the resistors, so that's this number here. We need to subtract the offset, which in our case is the intercept and then divide that by the mass of the resistor, which is the slope. And we get a number that is uh, uh, very close to seven. So we need to, uh, um, uh, we need to round up because in our particular case, uh, we are, you know, in this example, we only have integer values of resistors. We don't have one and a half resistors. So if we would say that this would equal um, seven resistors, and if we take a look here, it does look like we get seven resistors. Excellent. So that's how we use a calibration curve. This is a calibration curve that relates the mass of a pile of resistors to the number of resistors that are in that pile. And we can, uh, um, uh, you know, we can use that relationship to figure out the number of resistors in a variety of piles. Now. Let's try something a little bit uh, different. So another way to get at that same type of information, let's see, let me just organize my piles here just a little bit. And I'm just gonna put a bunch of resistors on here. Okay, now you probably can't figure out how many resistors are there. And we can use this equation, we could still use this equation to sort of estimate that, 8.92. Let's just actually go over here, take advantage of this and say 8.92. And so it looks like there's probably about 24 resistors, uh, 24 resistors in this pile. Um, and in this particular case, that may be true, but what we've just done is, uh, is, is not good analytical technique. And the reason for that is that our calibration curve in this particular case only goes from a little bit over 0.5 to around four grams. And notice how the mass that we're measuring is well outside of this range. All we know is that this relationship is between mass and number of resistors is linear between two and 10 resistors. We don't know what happens above 10. We don't know what happens below, uh, below two. Now in this particular case, we can use logic that this is going to extend linearly 
uh, for uh, the foreseeable future. Um, and we'd be right in this case, but we aren't always right when this is uh, 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 this technique is used for real samples. So we need to come up with a new technique or a new approach here uh, where the mass that we are measuring is within the uh, the linear range of what we're uh, uh, of of what we're analyzing. So the way we're going to do that is something called the method of standard addition, and we're going to use the same approach. Only now, instead of starting with an empty balance, we're going to start off uh, and call this x column the number of resistors added, and we're still going to measure the mass. And so we start off with zero resistors. So I've so I've got a pile of, of resistors here, and I'm going to add more to more resistors to it. So, but we're starting off. I have no resistors here, no added resistors, and the mass is 8.92 grams. And now let's see what happens when I go and add. I've added three resistors, and that raises to 10.02. I'm going to add. Another three resistors. So that gives us a total of six. And one more time. Three resistors. So we're a total of nine resistors and 12.24. We're still going to create a uh, um, plot, just like we did before. And we're still going to get the slope and the intercept. OK. Now, let's go ahead and add our trend line. I'm actually going to blow this up just a wee little bit so that we can see this. It is linear. I'm going to do this sort of uh, this backwards forecast here. And what we're going to see, so where it's our uh, our calibration curve or our standard addition curve is linear in this region where we were adding our our resistors, and it turns out that if we backtrack, if we go backwards here and figure out what the x-intercept is, the x-intercept is turns out to be the number of resistors. That were uh, that were present before we started adding adding anything. So we can use our linear equation. So long as this is a linear relationship, we can use our linear equation to figure out how many resistors were actually there at the beginning. So let's see if uh, uh, if that actually works. What we uh, uh, what we want to calculate is the x intercept, and the x intercept is uh, um, is b divided by is actually minus b over m, which is the uh, intercept divided by the oops, which is the intercept divided by the slope. So let's take the intercept and divide it by the slope. Our data, our analyst analysis tells us 24 resistors were in there, which is similar to uh, uh, to what we had uh, guessed from our calibration curve, uh, extending our calibration curve beyond the invalid range. And so, if we go ahead and count up these, I've got these in piles of 5, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 33. So 33 isn't 24. But remember that we started off by actually adding 9, uh, nine resistors in our, in our standard edition. So these were resistors that we had already added. Uh, what we had to start with was 5, 10, 15, 20, 24. And so this method is working, uh, working out pretty nicely. OK. So one last thing that I want to mention about the method of standard addition and why we would use this instead of uh, a calibration curve is what if um, so there's there's this thing that uh, that's called the matrix effect and we'll learn a little bit more about the matrix effect later on in the class but let's say 
instead of measuring instead of measuring these uh, uh, this resistor here, we measured this one. So notice how we've got two different resistors here. What are these? I believe one of them is a half watt. This is the half watt, and this is the quarter watt. So these are smaller resistors. They're going to weigh different, uh, weigh a little bit differently. And there's no way that uh, our calibration curve that we made earlier is going to work for resistors that have uh, that are have a different size. Um, so. In order, so I could either create a calibration curve, then measure this pile and use the calibration curve, or I could go straight to the standard addition approach, and uh, and and use that instead. So I'm going to choose the standard addition approach, um, and I'm just actually going to overwrite the data that I've got right here because I could use this uh, almost as a template, and so I start off at 5.55 and. Because these are small resistors, I'm going to add five resistors at a time. There was nothing special about the three. Um, I'm using three trials just, uh, um, uh, just for the sake of simplicity. Probably four or five trials if we were doing this for uh, in a real experiment would be a little bit more appropriate. But if you know that your data are going to be high quality, you get really good linearity, then uh, uh, you can probably escape or get away with just three, three trials because then you get your four data points. Okay, so there we go. We got a nice, uh, uh, a nice line here. Since I have everything already calculated, um, it tells me what the slope is. Remember, the slope is the the mass of a a single resistor, and these resistors weigh about half as much as the uh, the larger ones. So this has around 35, um, uh, uh, 35 resistors, and I'm going to I'm going to make a count. So we've got 10, 20, each one of these piles, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. I've got 50, and that is actually consistent with our 35 plus our 35 plus 15 makes, uh, uh, gives us to 50. So that, uh, that actually makes, uh, uh, makes sense. So our original pile had 35 uh, resistors in it. And, uh, and then the others were the ones that we added to it. So these are the two methods that we're going to be using throughout this, uh, uh, throughout this course in a variety of experiments to, uh, uh, to create relationships between an instrument's measurement, so what an instrument is measuring, and an information that we're interested in. Uh, oftentimes it's going to be a, an instrument response and we're interested in a concentration. Um, but in this particular case here, we were looking at uh, a more uh, uh, the uh, the quantity of uh, of items in a in a pile. But the same is going to be true for a variety of techniques that we use throughout the semester.